Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. And I uh, just want to let us know, for those being for the first time tuning in on Tuesdays, we talk more about current events that are either affecting the church or worldwide. And on Thursdays, we like to focus on what pastor's going to teach on on Sundays. And so, uh, as we tease out your message, you know, today, Pastor, for Sunday's message, um, it's a question about divorce. And what's interesting, to kind of give you guys a little bit of a backdrop, is that Jesus has been teaching his disciples about humility, the cost of discipleship. Because there's been this ongoing argument, like who's the greatest in the kingdom? Yeah. And mm -hmm. Jesus would use this time to teach them, but every time, every time he wanted to teach them were the great multitudes, of course, were the Pharisees. And the Pharisees here, as we'll see in, in Mark chapter 10, is that they begin to question Jesus, not so much to get a sincere answer, but they want to test him, mm -hmm. kind of humiliate him in front of his disciples, if you would. But the question that the disciple, that the Pharisees are asking Jesus this time is a question that is still used even today. And the question that they had asked is about divorce. Uh, they were, wanted to ask him, to test him, but they're asking him a question that is a debate even to this day. So, Pastor, as a pastor of our church, what's your response to divorce, especially within the Christian, within Christian families? Well, you know, divorce is a great destroyer. It destroys not only a husband and a wife, but it destroys families. It destroys fathers and mothers who gave that daughter up in marriage to that young man. It destroys... Uh, the fathers and mothers uh, of those who gave that young man up as he wanted to marry that young woman. It destroys homes and families. It destroys the lives of, of children that were born into that family. It's a great destroyer, which is why God said, I hate divorce. And you know, God had intended uh, male and female to be joined to become the one flesh and then to live the rest of their natural lives out in a covenant relationship that um, was intended to bring glory to God and produce children who had faith. It was his way of transmitting faith from generation to generation. And so when the uh, Pharisees approached Christ with a desire to test him and to prove him, they were actually drawing him into a contemporary argument that was going on at that time that people were well aware of, the argument concerning divorce out of convenience and then more restrictive terms for divorce. They wanted to see what side of that he would land in order that they might be able to test him because they knew that it would be possible if they could catch him at his words to turn off a number of people who had certain inclinations as it related to divorce. And so there was the easy, convenient divorce versus uh, under no circumstances except for one particular one, divorce. And that's what they were doing. We'll look at that with more um, clarity this upcoming Sunday. But um, no, it is a covenant that, that God has established for a man and a woman to have, and it's to be permanent. Uh, therefore, what God has joined together, let not man put asunder, because it's destructive. Uh, society is built on three basic things. You find those three things in the first nine chapters of Genesis. You see the church, and you see government, but you also see the establishment of marriage, marriage being one of the three building blocks of any healthy society. And so there are Christians to this day who are looking to get divorced simply because, and I don't want to minimize it, and again, we'll try and speak on this with more clarity this Sunday, but there are Christians who are finding excuses for divorce and um, abandoning their vows and abandoning uh, everything that's related to them, and it's destroying society. And it's a word that's thrown around so easily today, with even within Christian marriages, I read a statistic before we came and shared that, that that number of divorce within the Christian church or within Christian families is pretty staggering, almost as, if not as much as uh, non-Christian families. Well, actually, I read a statistic. I wish I could quote it by its source. But it stated that 
atheists have a, a less uh, percentage of divorces in their commitments than evangelical Christians. Imagine that for a moment. They have no belief in God or fear of God, but they have more integrity because they haven't minimized the commands of God and the directions of God. They haven't minimized them because they don't believe in God. They've just seen how important it is to have a relationship that is lasting. If you're going to commit yourself, it ought to be for a lifetime. And so, yeah, we, uh, we see quite a bit of that today. I, I've had a number of years of experience in ministry, and I can tell you that um, there are many who have a very cavalier approach to it. Interestingly enough, in the passages prior to chapter 10, Jesus was speaking, speaking of, of faith, and he also spoke of humility, and he spoke of servanthood. And all of those ingredients go into a successful marriage. You know, faith in God and, and a humble heart, you know, because of the hardness of your heart, Moses permitted this. And um, the idea of a husband serving a wife and the wife serving the husband, and then they together serving their children, that will, that will keep uh, families together. Faith, humility, and servanthood. You meant it. I, that's a great illustration. I haven't even heard of that. That's a great illustration. So, Pastor, you know this approach that, and we'll wrap it up with this thought here. Uh, so the, the casual approach within Christian families that can be a tendency to happen within marriages that lead to divorce, is that a reflection to the casualness that people have towards the church? It's a, a lack of fear of God. If God said, I hate divorce, and yet we don't care, it's a lack of fear of God. It's a cavalier attitude towards making a covenant because many people are looking at um, marriage as kind of like a prolonged dating experience. Hmm. And because there are a lot of people who just simply live in a cohabitation relationship, the value of marriage and commitment and all is diminished. And in a society that uh, basically approves of that and feels that's fine, you know, like it's a testing period as to whether or not we can actually make it. Um, we have, once again, we have reduced the most important human relationship to just a, a, um, a test or a, some kind of trial to see whether or not uh, I can actually commit myself to that. And with the, the lack of fear of God, the lack of reverence for his word by the the uh, cheapening of the grace of God to basically give me permission to do whatever I think is good and makes me happy, the failure to love my, my children, the failure to, to see what it means to wash my wife with the water of the word, the failure of, of the wives learning to submit to their husbands even as they do unto the Lord, and all the things that are related to that has contributed to the church's terrible record of retention of marriages. That is staggering. It is. <laughs> uh, so if you guys want to hear more of this, I, I really highly come to Sunday morning services as I was looking through your notes here, and this is uh, going to be an, a great study. So I want to invite you guys to come out, invite your friends and family. It's not going to be a message that's condemning, but no, it's, a, no. it's a message to see the importance of the fear of God and Amen. the fear of the Lord. Amen. And so invite you guys, come on out, 830, 1045. Uh, as Pastor David has taken us through Mark chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. And then uh, we have our Easter Good Friday services coming up and our Easter Sunday services. It's a great tool, again, you guys, to invite your friends and family to hear about the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, that is our the, the, the day that we look forward to as Christians, is uh, Amen. to celebrate the resurrection. Amen. Uh, and then keep Pastor David and Maria, as uh, you guys are leaving for Israel on Tuesday. Yes, this upcoming Tuesday, God willing. Yes, and what a great trip that will be. And so thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. Thank you, Pastor David. Of course.